Hello, hello. Welcome, my heartfelt leaders. This is Ashley Pitzer, and you're listening to Practicing Life Podcast. Today, I have a guest with me. Her name is Sandra, and I'm going to let her pronounce her last name because she is from Germany of all places. <laughs> and even though I used to speak German, I don't speak it now, and I'm not going to butcher her name. So, um, Sandra and I, I kind of really got to know Sandra from being in if you will, a, a mastermind of hypnosis program. So we both participated in this program where every you know month you had a new hypnosis that was given to you and challenges. And so we were always doing lives talking about what this hypnosis video or audio was providing for us, what we were getting out of it, what we were struggling with in our life. And there's a lot of connections that you make in those settings. And I really loved Sandra. Sandra's energy was just pure peace and light and love. And she has a way of collecting her thoughts and really presenting them so beautifully and uniquely. And um, I have watched her since I've left this program and she is phenomenal. She's putting out so much powerful, free, just vital uh meditations for your practice and for your soul to be able to live kind of that enlightened spiritual heartfelt life and this podcast if nothing is for my heartfelt leaders it's living from your heart instead of your mind and so I'm happy to welcome Sandra here I'm happy to um, talk to her and find out more about her and her story. One thing I will let you know right off the bat is please stay tuned until the very end of the podcast because Sandra is going to delight us with one of her own powerful ancient meditation practices. In addition, please check out the show notes because the show notes are going to lead you to her. I believe it's a YouTube site that is US based since she's in Germany. She has like a slightly different site. Um, but this will be accessible to anybody and you can start tapping into her as a resource and going there. And she has a free meditation practice for you on this website. And I'm so delighted to have you. So Sandra, first of all, let's say, how do you say your last name? Ho Huba. <laughs> Ho Huba. Ho -huba. It's, difficult. it's also difficult in Germany. I always have to explain it. So <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so let's dive in and let's hear your story. So what led you to this point where you are today? So it, for me, my spiritual journey started quite early in life as I was, I was quite ill and at a very young age. So there was this huge autoimmune disease and things going on with that. And I just knew it was, it was something with it. There was something behind it more than the doctor said. And it was Graves' disease. I don't know whether you know it. It's like where, you, where your eyes show up and it's, it's of the thyroid. And I had an operation because they said it could be that I was getting blind because of these these eyes. And in this operation, they've had they made a mistake. And so they the the doctor kit he cut my my optic nerve and I was blind on, on the left eye. And they they said, you can't do anything about it. By then it was impossible that a nerve that was once cut could grow together again. And inside of me, there was this voice coming from somewhere else saying no. In a very, like, it's, it sounded like, a, like an orchestra without music. <laughs> so, and... And this is when I when I really started to get into natural medicine, into ancient medicines, into even more into the spiritual realm. And whatever helped me then 
So I see normally, I don't need glasses or anything like that. And my nerve was getting back together and no one can explain it. <laughs> and so I, I really know a lot about the healing of the body. Uh -huh. And so I always believe in my patients and clients possibilities that they really have the possibility to change their life and that's what makes you a great hypnotist because you believe from a, yeah. an experience in your own life so for the I really do apologize because I didn't state Sandra is a hypnotist and a healer of hearts. And she specifically works with people that like clients who have some major diseases, as you heard her story. I mean, she knows exactly what it's like to have a disease and cutting your nerve and not being able to see. So more than just disease here, but she also works with clients who have um, traumatic or toxic relationships and helping that healing of the heart. So, you know, Sandra's story here is right off the bat from an early childhood, she's able to personally experience one side of it and transition to the other and being a hypnotist as well. The more that you believe what's possible, the more that you shed that light and share it with the person that you're hypnotizing and, um, it, it is conducive to each other. So if a hypnotist doesn't believe it's possible, I mean, this is why you need to find really good hypnotists because if a hypnotist doesn't believe it's possible, it's affecting your results and what you're getting out of hypnosis. And so anybody out there that is listening, if you're going through something that is traumatic and difficult, if you have a major injury, if you have a major disease, then you already know from Sandra's story, how powerful she is as a hypnotist, because she knows what it's like from a personal experience, not just an understanding, and she can help you heal. Thank you. You're welcome. And in 2013, I started with hypnosis. It was my first NLP seminar. And the guy who does these seminars, he really focuses on hypnosis. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure if I would have known then that it was about hypnosis, I would not have done it. That's <laughs> so funny. So I've gone there. And you were trying to lead that life, the universe brought it to you. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. love that. And it was like in, in the mornings, we had these theory classes and in the, in the afternoons we were working together. And I had a, a hypnotherapist who said he personally could not be put into a state of hypnosis. Right. He said, you can't do it with him. And this was the, the first person I, <laughs> I, I was working with. And he was from Switzerland. And perhaps you remember from the days when you were um, speaking German, that the Swiss German is really very, very nice. It's so lovely. And I thought perhaps he's more into feeling than not being so, so visual. So I, I was doing a, a hypnosis very much on, based on the feeling. And after, after it, he said, now you got me. <laughs> and so it was it was a it was a very good start. So I, I I had a feeling for it from from the beginning. It was really something that I I loved from the start, really, right from the start. It's such it's such a great method. It's such a wonderful tool. I really am. And in in one of the the trances, I got this, this message or even command to, to write books on self-love because self-love is one of the big keys to healing. And I thought it would be 
all about the healing of the body. And then a toxic relationship showed up. <laughs> and so there was another round in the realm of self-love. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really all about self-love when it comes to, to bad relationships. It's really the, the, the big foundation of it. Yeah, I can understand that. I mean, one of the things that I've learned is you don't destroy what you love. And so if you love yourself, hence self-love, you wouldn't put yourself in situations that diminish that feeling of self-love. You would, you would honor and respect and take care of. And so, I mean, but it's also a lesson that I've had to learn so I can relate to you. And I've had a toxic relationship as well. And for me, like when I reflect back on that relationship, it was a lot, I was making choices and I was allowing this to happen because I had some type of association in my brain that um, loving others meant self-sacrifice on my part. Mm -hmm. Well, self-sacrifice depletes a lot of your love. Yeah. And so it took me a, a long time to figure it out. And that was part of my journey. And, um, and, and as you mentioned, writing books, so I, this, this poster behind us, yeah, um, I know. <laughs> that is my book that I have written and it's a fantasy novel. And anyway, in this fantasy novel, it's about a girl going through self-discovery, but a lot of it is about learning to love yourself and stand into your power. So there's a lot of coaching and yeah. <laughs> not just like programming and psychology <laughs> in this book. Um, that's just who I am, but I can completely relate to what you're saying. And what I really love you expressing is, is that, you know, just like when I started writing a book, I had no idea when I was going to be writing this book that it was going to turn into stories on how to understand yourself better and to coach yourself. Essentially, I had no idea that was going to be part of it. And that's what you're saying is like, when you started writing, you had this idea of one concept of love and now it's been expanded because you listened mm -hmm. and you trusted your intuition. And, um, I really love that because now you've gotten, you've gotten two stories that you shared that well, three because of, of hypnosis that wasn't on your mm -hmm. agenda of how intuition has really stepped in and, and guided you. And you've kind of explained what intuition feels like and happens in your body. So that's really interesting because intuition can, um, it, it's, it's relatable, but we all have different experiences of how it shows up in our body and how it comes through us. And everybody's a little bit different. So it's nice to hear other people's perspectives because a lot of people have that like gut reaction. Well, I don't have a gut reaction. And apparently yours is more of that, um, the, the inner voice coming in so strongly and guiding you. So what do yeah, you, and also, it's like the more, the more you're opening up to the possibility <laughs> of getting all these information, the, the easier it is. Yeah. So I, yesterday I, one of my, my animal medicine, yeah. one of the animals is, is like, it's, it's the parrot. Okay. Oh, beautiful card. Okay. Parrots. I love it. And there's two and they're cuddling yeah. for the people that it's are really, it's really, it's really a very nice, it's an old painting. Oh, it's beautiful. And so I was in last week, I was in the zoo and they were, they were showing up the parrots, they're always coming to me and, and singing even songs, like there are some parrots who sing songs. And I've just forgotten about it again. And <clears throat> then for the, the following days, I've seen again and again and again, things coming up with parrots on it. 
So it's it's totally clear. Okay. <laughs> there, there's something in it. Yeah. And I think a few years ago, I would not have have seen this. Your so, awareness wouldn't have been. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's also what we what we are what we are growing and what we're ready to see and hear and listen to. So according to human design, I have this gut response. Okay. And I I tend to <laughs> I tend to to miss it. So. <laughs> well, I love human design and I'm completely fascinated by it. Um, mm -hmm. So let me ask you, because I love animal medicine too. We're, we're very like-minded people here. Uh, so what, uh, what does carrots mean to you? I mean, besides what comes to my mind, I want to know what comes to your mind. I didn't understand the beginning. Did okay. You know? So like when you, when you think of parrots, what, what comes to mind to you? Like their significance. So they're, they're colorful the animals that can learn different languages like from other look at that um, and we brought that up at the very beginning of this episode too yeah true true about foreign languages yeah. and adapting so and it's it's a kind of traveler between between the worlds mm, i love it and they are uh, they are very, very close with each other. So social. So they're very, very, very social. They're... And they have this, this humor. So they're laughing a lot. And they're really funny. So they're <laughs> making fun of each other. Yeah. Which is quite, quite surprising. And oh, for you? For, for me, I really think of, of joy, you know, because they're always talking to you and interacting and seeing, they want to be noticed. They want to take up space. You know, there's no, uh, there's no issues with self-worth or self-value. They're like, <laughs> look at me, baby. <laughs> so yeah, I, I consider them very happy, social, um, like fun, loving Mm -hmm. But I love what you added to it too, because I didn't even think about the fact that the fact that they parrot you, so they mock you, which means they are really good at languages. So very yeah. fascinating, great observation. I love it. So, um, and it's I love great to work with animal medicine. It's really yes. such a pleasure. Well, I had this whole experience just the other day and, um, I had a queen, a queen bee inside of oh. my house. I was washing what? dishes and I looked up and on my window, there is a bee in my house, not on the outside of the window. And mm -hmm. um, uh, I had my values like stickied on, on the window and it was right there on my values, like queen bee. <laughs> resting and showing me animal medicine <laughs> on my values I was like oh okay I'm like I hear the universe loud and clear and I mean the first question they had to ask myself was like what do what do bees mean to me and um I was also thinking that was the day that I was mailing out my PR boxes for my fantasy book and I have a character in there that I feel like every character relates to me because that's how it is when you write a book, but one mm -hmm. character represents me right now. And her name is Nana honey. <laughs> <laughs> me right here on my values. And my values are talking about love and creativity and bees represent like love and the nectar of life. And, um, the fact that it was a queen bee. So the person that's nourishing the, you know, and leading mm -hmm. all of the people, I was like, oh, dang universe, dang. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also there for the survival of the whole troop. Yeah. So yeah. the bee, the queen bee is the one who's responsible for the next year again. Yeah. Regenerating the next, um, youth cycle and yeah providing for everybody and yeah so yeah that's it's really great it is great I love it 
So, um, wonderful sign. <laughs> And then I want to ask you too, because I forgot that you were writing a book. You had mentioned that towards the end of when I was in this um, hypnosis group with you. So what, what is going on with your book? Have you finished it? Are you marketing it? Is it a work in progress? It is a, a work in progress. And uh, I said that the first part is going to be, be a three series. So the first part is going to be on, it's called self-love smelled like vanilla. Oh, and they say, um, what's it in English? Self praise thinks, and they have something very similar in German. Okay. And they say, Eigenlob stinkt. So it's like, and Loben is the same family of words as loving. Okay. So, <clears throat> and this this first book it's like it's it, it's so huge with so many pages so um i filtered one part of it and it's only going to be about only about heartache and what to do after or in toxic heartache working on that and how to get out of it so i i, I separated it and I'm going to use it to, to make it easier for me to bring it, to bring it out, to show it. Okay. As it's, as it feels somehow less, less, not that big, not that huge, not that big, big, big project. So I'll start with the with the smaller one in order to to learn how to promote, how to market a book. So you now, after your first book, you're really so much better at marketing a book. And this is this is like what I'm what I'm doing. And I'm really I'm, I'm finishing it. I have a, like friend of mine is going to be an editor and so oh that's wonderful it's coming out and uh probably also um translated into into english so. that's amazing yeah well congratulations it's, i mean it's, it's wonderful to write don't you think so yeah you know i think that that a lot has opened up within me with writing a lot of trust coming in and a lot of living from my heart because in in my past uh, when I had a, a job a lot of my working capabilities came from my analytics and my brain and when it comes to writing anytime I start getting into my head my work slows down and I get into overthinking and I get into worry and I get into anxiety and it's easy to recognize because I'm so in tune with my body. So I'm like, I know what I'm doing right away and I know where I need to be. And so it's a really interesting process because half the time for me, at least when I'm writing, it is about bringing it back to, I just need to write from my heart and I can't worry about how somebody's going to react to this, or if they think this is the right or wrong thing to say, or I'm saying this, you know, in a way that's like maybe offensive to them or not correct, or, you know, and, and the thing is, is there's so many ways, you know, just like love, there's so many ways to love an, a, a person. And so love can look really, really differently. And my book is a lot about love. It's about discovering who you are and loving yourself and so some, some people are going to totally relate to it and some people aren't, and I just can't get into what this is going to mean to somebody else. So a yeah. lot of personal strength and growth has come from just trusting and writing what I want to write, because that's when I'm really, really happy and I'm enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Great to yeah. hear. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. It's been a, quite a journey and I didn't hire a book coach. Um, so I, I planned out my budget of my money and this is how I spent my money. And I didn't factor in a book coach. 
And I would, I would tell anybody out there writing a book now, I can totally see the value of a book coach. <laughs> totally, yeah. totally, totally see it. And um, I think if I would have gone back and, and, and made a different decision, which I made the right decision for me. So I'm not regretting my decision, but I could, I would say that it would have been nice to have the support of a book coach, you know, and just like knowing things like, um, like when to do your, uh, editing, like when to do your beta reader, when to, um, send out your art copies. I've had to figure out all of this along the way. And, um, learning how to market myself, woo, lots of stretch and grow. Yeah. <laughs> and, and an editor or not an editor, but a book coach has been through all of this multiple times. And it's like having a shortcut <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. And I find like, instead of going through the door, I go through the window. <laughs> Do I get inside? Yes, absolutely. I managed to get inside, but it would have been a hell of a lot easier going through the front door. So, <laughs> now I get to share all of these experiences with the world. Mm -hmm. and I had an adventure doing it because going through a window is going to be a lot more entertaining and fun. <laughs> so, yeah. Very adventure. And so what do you feel like as far as when you're working with your clients, what do you seem to attract the most of like clientele wise? So they find themselves again and again and again in bad relationship mm -hmm. and they, they don't, they don't know why they can't figure it out. And some of them even say, I'm done with this. Never again. <laughs> I'm not going to get in another relationship. I won't, I won't do this again. So there's a lot of perfectionism going on. But for me, there's many of the, of the different kinds of insecure, the insecurely attached people. So it's like, much more women and it's like the anxious attachment style and fearful avoidance and also dismissive avoidance and they they tend to say that dismissive avoidance don't don't look for for help and I think the opposite is true so I can speak on that so they are and, and and it's there is on on the one side there is this I'll I'll draw something okay <laughs> it's always it's always easier for me to draw so we have four four basic needs when it comes to our our psyche four basic needs so the first one is the one for love and being close. And it's the one that we're, we're starting right away with it when we come to this planet. So it's really our, our first and most important one. And the one that we, we really need then when we are the little ones. So would you say um, that is also belonging or is that in a separate category? It's it's the same category. Okay. It's like being, being close, being loved, being being part of, of a relationship, so to speak. Then on the other side, there is this need of autonomy and we search for control. So these are two things. They show often up, <laughs> they really often show up in our relationship. Uh -huh. And we, we pretend we could be having control and we search autonomy. And we also want to be close, but not too close. And then it's this going back and forth. And the third of the these principles 
is the one for self-worth. So that you want to feel worthy. And self-worth is really the, the center of our psyche. Oh, okay. Who are worthy have so much easier to feel themselves, to feel good enough with themselves, to feel worthy. They have easier lives. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, the final one. It's the one where it comes to pleasure. So that, which was called the, the is for Freud. So like the, 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 it's like the, the inner, the inner child. So it's this, these, these, these feelings going on. There's this, this happy version with a lot of joy. And, and pleasure and laughter and all the good things going on. And then there is the, the, the version of it that is, that is in fear. And so this, this all has to do with this basic need. So we want more of, of one aspect and less of the other one. Yeah, so basically what you're telling me out of these four needs, there's a yin and yang to it. So there's your poles, um, your duality of it. So pleasure versus like I think of pain, but you're saying fear, same thing to me. Um, so that's like one and like your self-worth is like one side of it. But then when you get into it, it's self-deprecation on the opposite side of it. It's like they they all have, we want to... We want to find love and we want to find autonomy and we want to have this pleasure uh -huh. and we also want to feel worthy. We yeah. want all of them. <laughs> all at the same time. Want, yeah. And we don't want the opposite. And this is um, a psychologist called Klaus Grabe. He was writing on this subject and it's really, he's done great work and she's, so, so it's it's really something that helps you to to look at things happening to you. So it's it's so much easier to see oh what is missing there for me? What do I want to get? What do I want to gain? It it helps really a lot to to structure what's going on in you. Yeah, it's really so, a, a, it, an excellent strategy. To, to work to work with it and it makes it so much easier because for example if you have these we were talking about the, the bad relationship mm -hmm. and one of them that dismisses dismissive avoidant he wants a lot of autonomy and is afraid of love and being close so more this person is more on this side, doing everything for, for, for his or her autonomy. Uh -huh. And the person who's more on the anxious side is looking for, for love and doing everything for love. But has and no even staying in a bad relationship, <laughs> for example, because it's, it's so important for them. And the fearful avoidant is, is, is from one pole to the other one, switching from one side to the other one. Oh. So it makes these, these patterns easier to understand. And underlying the, we take the dismissive avoidant, who's really into autonomy, Underlying this basic need, there is a fear of not being loved. So it's it's like there's always underlying the other side. Uh -huh. And so the fearful avoidance, they often switch, even in one relationship from one side to the other. And when, when I'm working with my clients, 
and they think they are anxious avoidant. And if you go through their history with all the, with all the exes, then we find out, oh, there was this guy who was perhaps the really nice person and who was more on the anxious side and you were then the dismissive one. So it's really, it's really very, very interesting and it, it helps a lot to understand it with your, with your head and then be able to work on it with, for example, hypnosis, to get it into, into every little cell of you. Yeah, that's the power of hypnosis. So whatever it is that you're struggling with or um, feeling stuck on or is a limitation in your life, you can get into kind of a relaxed, focused state and you can let your subconscious, which rules all of your behaviors, it's your actions that you're taking all day unconsciously. And you can program your brain to receive information that's going to help you overcome these obstacles. I mean, this is the basis behind what hypnosis is. And so a lot of people use it in their, in their careers, or if they have a major fear, a lot of people choose, I'm just talking to my audience, but you know, if you have a fear of like, thanks, <laughs> that would be me. But anyway, um, whatever your fear is, people might see hypnosis, but this can apply even to relationships. And that's what Sandra is saying is that, you know, once they identify the root cause of what's, uh, what's going on in your relationships with people, then you can use that tool of hypnosis to kind of expand how your mind sees a picture and to let your body and your brain know that you're safe. And this is how you want to do it the next time. And, and create a new meaning within your body and your mind to live from. Yeah, and create these, first of all, a good relationship with yourself. Oh, yeah. That you love yourself, that you are worthy for you, that you give yourself this autonomy to, to decide and that you can enjoy your life, that you have the pleasure in your life. So it's it's really... It's, 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 it's a nice, a nice circle, I think. Yeah, it is. I mean, I mean, I'm still doing multiple rounds of coaching, even though I coach people and stuff like that. I'm, I'm still a student and I'm still learning yeah. and I'm still growing. And I, and for me, my belief system is that that's how it should be for the rest of my life. And I say yeah. should on purpose because, um, <laughs> it is an act of self-love for me and it is a discipline and it creates value in my life. And so it's a high priority and value to me, but you know, along the ways, like we get into deeper and deeper layers of what, what we really think and what we really mean and allowing ourselves to be open to new possibilities and new ways of thinking. I mean, this is why th this is why I'm in this work. This is why I love people who are in this work. Um, because living from, living from, this is how it is. This is how it always is. And like you were saying that your clients, when they came to you, some of them were to the point that they're like, I'm just done with this relationships. It's better for me not to have these relationships. And, and that is denying yourself as, as, you know, like essentially one of your four basic needs, which is that yeah. love and that closeness. And so you can definitely, I know people who have lived this lifestyle, you can totally go on living this way, but is this what's best for you? Is this giving you the joy that you want? Like, is this, you know, are you open to trying something different so that you can have what you really, truly want and that value yeah. that you're worthy of what you really want? Yeah. Yeah. So I got to ask you too, I'm going to switch subjects here. Yes. <laughs> so one of the things I also know about you is like, you, you know, your ability, like if, for those of you that are listening to the podcast versus the YouTube, um, Sandra's entire room is filled with plants. And what I know about her is like, she seems to be some type of like plant genie. So can, can <laughs> we figure out what's going on there? Like, tell me, like, do, do you like, are you like a. I don't, I use, I use this term freely. So maybe it's not appropriate and I'm sorry if it's offensive, but like, like you or you like a, like a, 
the word witch is coming to my mind, like plant witch, you know, like, are you, um, <laughs> I, I work a lot with, with plant medicine. Yeah. And it's always been easy for you. And I started to collect like flowers and herbs from a very, very young age. So I, no one was telling me what it was and I was just starting along with it. And so it's, it, it's probably been, been there before. And I, I think they're so good for your environment. And I live in a, in a city, so it's, it's good to have something green around you. Yeah. And they are, I think many of, of the plants, they enjoy being, being loved as well. So they, yeah. they show it. <laughs> so you can't tell, but there's my one, my only plant in this office is my money tree. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have this different version of, of money trees, the the pancake plant, you know? Okay, okay. It's like the Dutch version of it. It's also a money plant. I have one like that that's upstairs. I actually just had to repot it this weekend because um, it got some type of, like, not flea, but gnat to it. And I was like, no, mm -hmm. you can't eat my plant. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but I find it very you interesting. Got dry neem oil. Yeah. Yes, I did. I did buy some, Yeah. Um, so like one of the things that I believe in and um, I, this is the second time I've thought about it in this conversation. So I want to bring it up, but one of my belief systems is like what you gravitate towards, like what just, um, you know, whether it feels natural or you just have a high interest or um, appreciation or admiration towards is something that you did in a past life that you, you you know, your spirit remembers you know, so like, I would say my guess would be that in a past life, you did a lot with plants, you know, whatever that may have been, whether it was like a herbal medicine doctor or, you know, like, cause who knows hundreds of years ago, that's how, um, like I have, um, uh, I have a lot of Indian ancestors in, in my mm -hmm. background. And so like, even when I grew up as a little kid, my, my grandma was all like, you got an ear infection. Let me go grab some herbs and mix this yeah. stuff up. And I'm going to put this in your ear, you know? And so like, this is kind of how I grew up. So even, even hundreds of years ago, we didn't have like doctor doctors like we do now, or if we did, it was only for the select few, um, mm -hmm. high class people that could have it. So I just think a lot of times, like for me, when I think about hypnosis, I wasn't planning on being hypnotized or <laughs> becoming a hypnotist. It wasn't even in my forte. And, um, it's just like one day I knew I needed to do it, mm -hmm. but I really think that a lot of that comes from, this was a past life. So it's so familiar to me. Yeah. Thanks. So too. Yeah. yeah. And in 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 one of the hypnosis seminars, uh, there was a an elderly lady who called herself a shaman and a witch. Okay. And she <clears throat> lives also in in Bavaria uh, at a wonderful lake, so really really nice. And she and she. And she saw me for the first time. She was coming up to me, looked me straight into the eye. And she said, you are a shaman. You have always been a shaman. You will always be a shaman. And you can't do anything about it. <laughs> That's what the first time we connected with each other. Oh. So probably something like that was, was going on in my past. I believe it. I definitely and you can really work with, with hypnosis. We we do this that we go if if something show shows up and we have the feeling that it's uh could be from a past life, we, we go in there. So yeah, you, you believe in exploring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, when I did my astrology reading by somebody yeah. phenomenal, I know there's a lot of uh, people out there like show business astrologists, but I mean, like somebody who really studies it, I went to one and um, she was telling me it, like you, she was like, oh, you had to have been like a shaman or something in your past life. And she's like, but it doesn't matter because she was, this was right when I signed up to do my hypnosis school. I hadn't even yeah. started it, but I knew I was going to it. I had told her that I was doing it. And I was like, what did the stars say about this? You know, and anyway, <laughs> I'm asking all these questions. And she was like, oh, she was like, well, sh- like today, shamans are often in some type of like healing field and hypnosis is one of those fields. And she was like, yeah. so she's like, you're following your same pattern that you've had in multiple lives. Mm-hmm. She was like, it's just for you. She told me personally that my inner work came from at some point in my life when I acted more purely in the healing field, something like a shaman, I must not have been able to um, provide for myself or survive. And it's created kind of an ancestral like fear within my spirit. And that's why I haven't always opened the door to that possibility in my life to be a healer again, Mm -hmm. because that fear from my past is still showing up in my present. And that was her, you know, kind of advice to me was to work on that healing and, um, you know, just to keep, keep, keep that door open essentially. Sorry. Yeah. And, and also be, be aware of these old feelings coming up, being even older than you think. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that really blew my mind when I started doing energy work is how much from past lives are brought forward. And I read that book, you know, many lives, many masters. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so much to life. You know, there's so <laughs> much to life. And um, it's really interesting to think about the work that we do now and what it is setting up for us and what it is setting up for other people too. So it's really impactful. Yeah, and it's it's also great to. I sometimes work with um, elderly clients who have still who who remember the the Second World War, and there's a lot of fear going on, and it's so great what hypnosis can do about it so it's really something that they then don't pass on to the next generations and they're all working on it and there was this one guy who was whenever there was like new year's eve they they tend to have all these explosions around and celebrate and he was sitting under a table and hiding and the same and there was anything going on in a in a movie or in the news he was always hiding under the table and and shaking and so you can do really excellent work with hypnosis all your clients go and look out for a hypnotist if you feel like it well this is the power of hypnosis doing that age regression work and the timeline stuff absolutely so powerful and yes. um, i'm going to go ahead and guide us towards doing that meditation but before yes. we do that i want to let everybody know that in the show notes you're going to have sandra's website um i I didn't specifically ask this, but I'm going to assume that Sandra can work with anybody internationally because Zoom makes it possible to do anything and even energy work can be done through Zoom. I've done it for years now and I've hired people to do it. I've worked with multiple different people. It's so possible. The point is, is your thoughts aren't local, (laughs) you know? (laughs) energy isn't local and every, we are all connected energetically and that's why it's possible. So if, if something that Sandra spoke to you personally, if it moved you, then that's a sign for you to probably reach out to her or set with it 
and, and follow her at the least to continue to consider what it is that's calling you towards Sandra. So I want to thank you for being on this show and I'm going to wrap up now so that once we get done with meditation, we'll just kind of end it. So, um, and now please only watch this or listen to it when you're not driving. Exactly. <laughs> Always remember that. Yes. Always Thank remember. you so much for having me. It's really a pleasure to talk to you. Enjoyed oh. it a lot. I enjoyed having you and learning and sharing. And so I really appreciate it. And I'm wishing you well. And everybody that is listening, let's get relaxed. Get in a calm, comfortable place with no distractions. <laughs> um, this if you are driving because it is not safe. Um, no. So like so stretch out. And I want you to close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Hold it. Hold it. And exhale. And another deep breath in. Hold it. And exhale. The hand on your heart. How does it feel in your heart? What are the needs that you want to fulfill now, today, in the next few days? What does your intuition want to tell you right now? And put the other hand on your solar plexus chakra. It's like top of your belly. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. So whatever is in your heart, it wants to be in your life. comes through this channel of the solar plexus. Move clockwise. It's wide and open. 
and why, so why is your heart? Feel the connection. And want that which wants to show up. People who want to show up. Or the medicine that wants to show up. Into your heart. Dancing in your solar plexus chakra. Remember all the ones listening, standing in a circle. All of us inviting what is good for us. Now, look to the person standing on your left-hand side and send them Good wishes and whatever they want in their life comes true. Then you look on your right side. And you're grateful because this person wants you to thrive, to be worthy and love yourself. See it as a, as a circle. And you come back here, you're grateful. You say thank you to all the other ones. To your heart and your solar plexus. To every little, every little cell of yours. You can move your fingers and toes. Stretch out, open your eyes, come back here. Happy and relaxed. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, everybody. I will say take care and I will see you next week.